like shapeless, like water. What's up, y'all? This is Critic, and today we will be reviewing the documentary, the Netflix documentary, A Kid from Coney Island, produced by Kevin Durant, Stefan Marbury, was directed by Chico Oza and Cody. And I've been knowing this for like a couple weeks now. I knew this documentary was coming out was because Stefan Marbury has an Instagram and one of his Instagram lives, he was mentioning that he had a new documentary coming out. I didn't know much about Stefan Marbury. I knew he was an NBA player in the league. I know he was a former star or a well-known star in the league. And he played for the Knicks and the Timberwolves and the Phoenix Suns and the New Jersey Nets. I'm an NBA fan, so I knew the Jits and all that. But I never knew his experiences in China, what he went through when he was out of the league. And this was my chance to know what his life was, how he grew up, and how he was in the NBA, and what happened when he left the NBA and went to China, and after playing for China, retired. So today I just watched the Netflix series, well the Netflix documentary, and I can say it was really good. The first thing that I noticed from the documentary is they're really creative with the transitions. From the start of the documentary, they have this claymation animation. And it shows a kid playing basketball, which I assume is through Coney Island, going through the projects, going upstairs and turn on his TV. And you see Stefan Marbury play from college, to the NBA, to China. And then throughout the documentary, that's how each chapter of Stefan Marbury's life transitions. So I really like the claymation and it was a good start on the documentary. They also went through the neighborhood of Coney Island, talking to his family, his brothers, sister, his mother, and talked to the people around the neighborhood, like the barbershops. I suppose nobody in here ever heard of Cassius Clay. We got a point. Cassius Clay was a bad one. Where they talk about stuff like basketball, hip hop, and all that. And they were talking about how Stefan Marbury grew up and how he was raised and how he was a part of a legacy of the Marburys. Because before him, he had three brothers that played basketball and were almost ready for the league. One was named Eric Marbury, Donnie Marbury, and Juju Marbury. All three of them did great in high school and in college, but they never made it to the NBA. From when he started playing as an eight year old to college of how much pressure it was to make it to the NBA because his brothers didn't make it to the NBA. And it was very important to not just him, but to his whole family. They mentioned in high school, he was one of the best New York guards in history. Talk about his rivalries with Felipe Lopez. There were people in this documentary that surprised me like Stephen A. Smith. His very first move as the executive was to sign Lamar Odom. Who was on crack? Cameron. Chauncey Billups. Mulberry's father was a big influence in his life, trying to push him, make him do the right thing, and to always have faith. They will talk about his journey in Georgia Tech University, his one year there, and how it helped him become a top pick in the NBA draft. And look, he was in the 1996 NBA draft. That draft is one of the best NBA drafts in NBA history, in my opinion. Mulberry was drafted with Allen Iverson, Kobe Bryant, Steve Nash, Ray Allen, and other folks that were really good in that draft too, like Jermaine O'Neal and other people. And when Marbury got drafted as the fourth pick for the Milwaukee Bucks, he went upstage, he shook David Stern's hand, who was the owner of the NBA at the time, and he was hugging his family and crying because how much it means to his family that he made it to the NBA when his brothers weren't able to make it to the NBA. And it was like an end of a movie. Now, Marbury didn't go to the Milwaukee Bucks, he was traded to the Timberwolves, which had Kevin Garnett there, getting traded to the New Jersey Nets, which they would be talking about. And then they would talk about him getting traded to the Phoenix Suns and the New York Knicks. And when he went to the Knicks, everything went downhill from there. And then Stephon Marbury starting to get depressed. He didn't want to play anymore. They talk about his experiences in China and how that was a rebirth of his career and a rebirth of his life. And playing for Beijing China rejuvenated him. He ended up winning the championship in China for Beijing, which was Beijing's first basketball championship. So in this documentary, I knew, I didn't know much about Stefan Marbury, but after seeing it, 
I know so much more about it. I know so much about him and what he brings to not just the NBA, but basketball, period. I really liked the documentary. It was really great knowing more about Stephon Marbury. So I would give the documentary a 3.5. It was, it was good. And now that I watched it, I know why that dude <laughs> diss LeBron all the time. And Michael Jordan too. <laughs>